Hello, good day, guys. This is Dr. Ku Autofix. How are you guys doing? I hope you're fine. I hope you're doing great. Well, I'm a little bit excited today, and I hope you guys are. If you are worried about your car that's actually throwing coolant up, like someone who's throwing up, what the heck is actually causing that problem? So in this today video, I'm going to be teaching you top cause for why your coolant is overflowing and is actually throwing up. When your car started throwing up, whoa, it doesn't feel good. Trust me. It doesn't feel good. It could feel anything, but good is not one of them. And you want to arrest that situation very fast, super fast. Because if you don't do it, well, there's going to be more problems that actually going to take a whole lot from your wallet and it might even damage your engine. So I have actually witnessed this kind of problem a lot in different car making model. And the diagnostics of where this problem is coming from is what I'm going to be teaching you in this very brief and comprehensive video about why your car is actually in overflowing with coolant and what you should do at that very moment to save yourself because there are a whole lot that can cause it but if you implement what i'm going to be teaching you in this very video you might save your engine from overheating serious overheating if it is not already overheating if it is already overheating then i'm going to teach you a safety measure right emergency measure you can apply to get yourself out of the allocation into the nearest mechanic or even the home until you find the culprit that is making that mess and resolve the problem i hope that is clear now let's get back to the business and talk to this guy why and ask him why it's always overflow i've actually witnessed that okay here we are again with this my boy vw now in the past uh, one year, I've actually observed a lot of overflow in this very car here, where the coolant is gushing out of here. Sometimes the cover can be off and seeing it right there at the back door, rushing, like it's coming from Russia, Wagner Group. So, when I still seen it actually overflowing right there, one of the first things which I actually know that actually happened is, well, first, there is a low coolant level that is present inside the car before that very moment, so it introduced air, too much air inside the system. Did you hear that correct? Now, I just gave you two points. First of all, there is a lower coolant level. When there is a lower coolant level inside your car, well, things get blown out of proportion because the coolant circuitry of your car is designed to function and cool your car with a coolant because this is not the Volkswagen Borg that is a boxer engine. You know about the boxer engine, it box and all that, you know, it throw punch, come on. So this is not a boxer engine, the Volkswagen famous boxer engine that uses that is air cooling system. So this is typically a coolant uh, cooling system engine. So it uses coolant in order to reduce the coolant or the, the, the temperature level to reduce or regulate the operating temperature of your engine when your car works. So if there is a drop in the coolant, it's going to draw your attention and overfloating can actually be one of them. And what that really means is when the coolant level get dropped, right? automatically air get fed inside the system and when air get fed inside the system there's gonna be like a measuring scale right here to keep it balanced when the volume of the air that's present inside the system start getting higher then the coolant level started getting lower and the temperature of the car started going higher that's what it is the pressure and the temperature start going way up here not even way up there so in order to keep the temperature lower up here the coolant level has to come up higher so that the air level within the system air trap inside the system can be lower down here that's how it is that's how most cars are engineered to function air trap inside the system most pujos don't play with this as long as you have any air trap inside the system or the system is not well bleeded then it will start overflowing everyone here when your car is actually the temperature of your car has built up the engine has built up when you're opening this you want to be very 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 serious first you want to make sure that you get a rag because it might splash or first of all kindly pull this one and when facing it here, you're going to be seeing a lot of steam jetting off here if you still notice some degree of coolant here then you want to top it off while the engine is hot but not when the coolant temperature level of your car this guy has reached around 130 no if your car has overclocked or reaching 100 or 100 and something hey do not let's say 120 do not add coolant while the engine is hot you're gonna damage your top cylinder head gasket i repeat do not add coolant now other reason why you have a coolant overflowing right there in your car is the radiator fan 
stopped working. For any reason that make the right little fan to stop working, you will see this guy, you see the coolant side rushing out of the system. Why? Because the temperature that is built up within your engine will be so inconducive for the coolant to remain still inside there without looking for an escape to exit. It's more like when the fan stop working is typically speaking, what the fan has just said is abandon ship. And when it's abandon ship, or the coolant temperature, or the coolant level within, or the coolant, sorry, present inside the system, we start looking for a way to escape. It could be from here or any joint within the system circuitry. Another guy that can cause a problem within the, to make the car coolant to start overflowing is a bad fan control module. Where is the fan control module for this? Well, if you're looking for it anywhere else in not outside this parameter then you're making a mistake this is actually going to be different from different car making model for toyota models you're often going to be seeing the fan control module right in between the two fans or just at the side of the fan but for mercedes bmw and volkswagen they have their own encapsulated right inside the fan and that's why most of their ready to fans are expensive much more than that of toyota or honda now let's get back into the business you guys also have to understand that if suppose the radiator control module which is somewhere up here for most uh asian models is defective then it's going to create a discommunication of power between the control module and the fan and the fan is going to stop running and when the fan stops running then the coolant will start running outside we start gushing outside the radiator reservoir so you want to check and make sure that the uh the control module here is actually sending power to the fan you can actually see a two outlet in most toyotas i can actually put the picture here if i remember it while doing the edit of this very video here so you want to check the output and see it's getting up to 12 volts or depending let's say anything from 5 5 to 14 volt is the acceptable range but anything lower than that when the engine is on well there is other factor you have to understand if you're not getting any power while checking that very control module output all right then it means one you could be having a 40 control module second maybe the engine hasn't heated up a lot and you for any reason open the reservoir if you open it when the engine temperature has risen but it is it has not gotten to the operating temperature where or the uh, acceptable range where the ECM is gonna use the signal which is gonna be getting from the coolant temperature sensor to power up this guy here through the control module and you open here the coolant is gonna start over floating right away and if it is a Range Rover you want to shut it down because you are one click in blowing up the top cylinder head gasket I hope you guys are listening now for some other cars, in order for you to validate it, suppose this fan is in a very good condition because if the fan stops working, like I said previously, it's going to create a system overheating and the coolant to start overfloating. You want to go ahead and go inside your car and turn on your AC system. As soon as you turn on your AC system, this fan should kick on and start running. In full duty cycle, if the system has overheat because it's going to be increasing pressure and temperature and the system is actually going to notice that using the AC system pressure switch or pressure sensor. Now, other factors that can actually make your car to start throwing out a coolant and start making a coolant overflow is a blown top cylinder head gasket. If you have a blown top cylinder head, head gasket, well, 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 there is a way to find out if suppose you have a blown top cylinder head gasket. Uh, this is not the ad blue trick. This is not the the wolf of the wall street trick this is gonna be dr cool's auto fix trick so in that very trick there what you need to do in order to know if suppose your car top cylinder head has uh, blown into proportion is you want to wait for the engine to cool down a little bit not completely then go ahead and open this guy up then tell someone to crank up the engine if you crank up the engine and this guy throws the coolant up right away jet it up straight up then you know that that car has a blown top cylinder head gasket simple easy now another way which also you want to know is suppose that your car 
has a blown top cylinder head gasket is if even though if it if, if you started the car already and you have seen the coolant in your car bubbling from here then you know definitely boiling like as if it's trying to cook some recipe maybe like some uh what do you call it again let's say like uh rice or boil some beans then you know definitely you have a blown top cylinder head gasket right but in some situation it's not every time that your car is actually boiling water that it means that you have a blown top cylinder head gasket so be advised and uh take a lecture on some, some other videos which i've uploaded on youtube channel to know when your car actually have a blown top cylinder head gasket now the last guy which you're going to be using to cap up this very episode of uh, coolant overflowing is a 40 coolant temperature sensor the coolant temperature sensor is very very imperative for the smooth operation of your engine as much as temperature controls temperature regulator uh, regulation uh operating engine temperature regulation so the electronic control module of your car or the engine electronics management also known as the ecu or pcm or ecm is relying very much on the coolant temperature sensor in order to actuate the functions of the cooling system effectively if it is defective which is this guy right here you want to find where yours is located is most of the time you can trace the upper holes of the radiator system and find it right there and sometimes it can be two so you find one on the upper hose and you find one on the down hose the down one is to know when the coolant temperature the thermostat has opened so to use that to notice the difference in temperature and activate the fan so like i said it's used to activate the fan and or to bypass the fan so if it is defective in some car making model the fan is going to run in full duty cycle to protect the engine that is most uh, fail safe measures which auto manufacturers actually do to protect the car from damaging the engine which is the most expensive piece so guys i know you guys find this very resourceful to knowing why your car is throwing coolant the last one sorry there is always going to be a last one is no coolant inside the system if there is no coolant inside the system well the little one that's actually there is going to boil it really much and pressurize it that's going to start throwing up right there as overfloating and the very last one is a bad coolant pump when the coolant pump is not in good condition well definitely what you're going to be actually seeing there the typical scenario which you're going to be seeing there is that the the coolant is not circulating through the coolant uh circuitry very well as a, very much as they're supposed to so the coolant is supposed to be moving from the high to the low the upper radiator hose to the down radiator hose what that means is when it goes through the engine hot sorry cold then it come back hot then the radiator cools it down reduce the temperature just like what the condenser does to the ac system condense reduce uh, condense the gaseous refrigerant back to liquid then send it back into the system in low pressure form through the uh, uh, expansion valve so in the case of the radiator the radiator reduces the temperature of the coolant that comes out of the hot engine and supply the cold one back in provided that the fan is in a very good condition you don't have a clog radiator all right i forgot to mention a, a clog radiator it's also gonna make your your coolant to overflow so you want to check for a clog radiator i made a video about it so go ahead and watch that very video because it's gonna be saving your ass too if your radiator is clogged and you don't know the fan can be good the coolant pump can be good everything can be good and still you're gonna be having a coolant overflow and your top cylinder head is not yet blown so you might end up going ahead to replace the top cylinder head and not knowing that it is a clog radiator problem so because when your radiator is clogged it typically doesn't reduce the temperature of the coolant that is being taken drawn out of the system and imputed into the radiator so the radiator technically is there in spirit right but in flesh is weak so you need to take a look at that then the coolant pump if the coolant pump is bad it's not going to be circulating the coolant that is cold back into the engine so it will recycle or uh, yeah to recirculate the hot one into the radiator so what that means is that the hot radiator uh, coolant is going to remain inside the engine and typically the temperature is going to start rising and pressure will follow and that is where you're going to start seeing them declaring abandon ship and the coolant to start overfloating right here 
now that you know all the causes of why your car is having overflows and overheating go ahead and give this video a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share with others who are looking for why their car they're having overflowing uh, system and uh, so they can fix it themselves and save money in cost of repairs so cdiy or car enthusiasts i remain dr cool see you on the next one bye for now